Hi, I'm Patrick Dawson from the Digital Sharecropper, and you're about to watch my interview on the Online Prosperity Show, where I'm going to talk about basic principles and fundamental business practices that are going to make you succeed in the digital realm. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we dive deep into the realms of success entrepreneurship, and the digital landscape. I'm your host, Prosper Tarowinga, and today we have a guest whose journey is not just inspiring, but also a testament to the ever-evolving world of online business. Now, Patrick, how are you doing today? Doing great. Delighted to be here. Absolutely. And for those that are meeting Patrick for the very first time, Patrick is the mastermind behind the digital sharecropper. And his journey started back in the mid 90s as he had seen that the online world is more like the, um, you know, farming industry where you could lease other people's land and be able to harvest and share the dividends from that. So we're going to be diving into that and his reasoning around why he thinks this is, um, you know, um, the way he views the internet. And um, what he's also going to be sharing is some knowledge bombs that will actually leave you inspired and motivated and ready to con to conquer the digital frontier like you've never done before. So let's just dive in to the show. Now, Patrick, first of all, what is a sharecropper? It's sort of like a tenant and farmer arrangement where you lease the land and you share in the profits. So just think anything where you lease something, maybe you lease an automobile or a house, and you didn't have to have all the capital up front, but you get to get the benefits immediately of that property or that vehicle without having to have saved all the way up for it. So I see that as basically what uh, digital sharecropping is in, in the same way. Absolutely. And could you explain how that sort of relates in our day-to-day -day experience of the online space? Well, in the day-to-day, -day, I mean, we have all sorts of software and platforms that we gain access to, usually for a nominal fee or occasionally free. And we can use these as leverage to build our businesses online without having to have large amounts of upfront capital or without really a huge learning curve, we can be up and running. I, I like that because in this very instance, you know, we're recording, uh, you are out there, you're in America, right? Yes. Right. We would have had to pay for flights. We would have had to pay for a studio for us to be able to record this, a team of 500 people, but we can just lease this moment in time from, you know, a platform without having to expend that uh, kind of money. Now, how did you actually come about that sort of realization um, in this instance? Just let us know how you actually, um, you know, got started in your line of work. Well, I actually started before I was in digital real estate, I was in physical real estate. So remodeling houses, buying and selling, things of that nature. And we got eventually into the information space where learning programs, things to help people invest, and I started to realize that I felt like I could do this online without all of the in-person meetups, without having to rent the hotel room, light up the speakers, do all that sort of coordination. I thought I could do a similar thing where we're teaching and focus on online real estate instead of physical real estate. We could accomplish basically the same thing without so much of the overhead and without being tied to a physical location, all those type of things. And that's really how I got my start. I think that's a great observation because so much can be done, um, you know, without expending so much money. And, you know, the cost of entry has really been lowered. Now, you went on and started the digital sharecropper, which um, is it an inner circle that offers insights and a straightforward uh, three step method that you're using to establish and expand online businesses. Now, can you maybe walk us through, first of all, these steps and what, you know, you're offering um, and sort of maybe if you can elaborate how that has helped entrepreneurs to actually thrive in the digital space? Yeah, exactly. Well, what I have going on is I have a whole portfolio of sites that I'm involved with. And what I've done is on each site, I learned something, some strategy that I test out that works and maybe some strategy that doesn't. And I use the digital sharecropper as my sort of forward facing site where I explain everything that worked without all of the hype and without the upsells and that sort of a thing where if it worked on a different blog that I have, then I'm going to relay that on the digital sharecropper so that you can use it for your blog or your site, whatever business you're in. 
And so that's kind of my, that's my mission with the digital sharecropper is to take what I've learned elsewhere that actually works instead of having one of these sort of circular sites where you've made money talking about making money, which is how you made money, which is then you talk about making money. So it's like, I want the real world results that you can achieve based on real world experiences that we've had in our businesses. Absolutely. And um, I, I really resonate with that because there's so much talk out there on the internet and usually it's just stuff to sell courses and tools that seemingly go nowhere without actually owning um, any of the real estate that's out there. So who do you normally sort of work with or who is the target audience that uh, would resonate with this um, inner circle or what you do at the digital share crop up? Well, we, what we have is we're gearing it towards someone maybe on the intermediate level, not for straight up beginners. If you're just getting started, I, there's plenty of good resources that will teach you that'll hold your hand and walk you through some of the steps to set up your business. We're looking for someone who has tried some things. They've sort of built a Frankenstein, web, Frankenstein website with a lot of different technology that maybe isn't integrating perfectly. Maybe they bought into some hype that this is the newest tool that's going to elevate their business. And they're just sort of wandering around in this wilderness trying to figure out what are the things that are actually important in my business? What should I actually be focusing on? Th those are the people we're looking for. That's They're out there, they're willing to put in the work and they're willing to try, but they uh, haven't found all the solutions yet. I can, I can attest. I mean, we're all digital uh, sharecroppers out there just looking for somebody to show us, you know, where to plant our seed and to actually, you know, how to then harvest it. Now you shifted, um, you know, from, you know, real estate, which includes building a portfolio and you are now building sort of virtual portfolios online. Um, and that obviously is a little bit intriguing for some people. Could you maybe elaborate? Because I've noticed you've got what's called zero based thinking as a concept. Now, how has this actually influenced your, your decision um, that you made for this uh, shift? Well, during the transition from offline to online, we actually took an extended vacation in South America. And it was there where I discovered this concept of zero-based thinking where wipe the slate clean. What would you want your life to be like? How would you want to create things? And pretend you don't have the previous experience. You don't have any of the baggage or the expenses that you're already tied into. And what exactly would you want? And that's really what I realized is that I liked the teaching element of it. I liked the figuring things out. Each deal was always unique in real estate. There was always some challenge that would pop up or some third party that you had to deal with that uh, wasn't doing things on the right time frame or whatnot. So I thought the zero-based thinking, I thought there's elements here that I like, but there's elements here that I don't like. And how can I create a life that keeps those things that I like and jettisons those things that I don't like? So I think zero-based thinking is really just pretend you have no history. You were born today and you could do anything and don't say, well, I have these payments. I have this um, sort of I have this overhead or I have this, I've spent so much time doing this, uh, something in a different field. And so I have to keep going with that. It's sort of like a reset button. I like that. And and I feel like everyone had that reset in the last couple of years where the world was completely on a standstill. And, um, you know, so many people were really brought to the awakening that some of the work that they've been doing is non-essential. So sometimes I laugh when somebody comes in and tells me, oh, I've got 25 years of experience of what really that wasn't needed in the last couple of years um, and things like that. So obviously you're traveling to South um, America as a digital nomad, you know, obviously shaped this way of thinking. What were some of the lessons that you learned as, as you entered into these realms you know, that some people who've never ventured outside their comfort zone might need to know? Well, I think for one, for going to a different location, you have to learn an entirely new routine. And in our case, we had to learn an entire new language. We had to understand different cultures and so forth. And I think that's sort of the basis for business is everything's constantly changing. So when we then came back and started to implement things in a digital way, there was so much stuff where you're kind of starting from scratch. And I think having that understanding that everything will constantly be changed. I mean, that's what we talk about all the time on Digital Sharecropper is that expect the change. Expect that everything I put into a certain platform might disappear tomorrow. So have backup plans, have ways to repurpose things so that it's not a total waste. So I think those are the big takeaways for that is just embrace the change instead of being afraid of the change. 
Oh, I like that. You see, for me, I was actually surprised because I was actually celebrating my one year anniversary being on LinkedIn today, even though I've been in business for 12 years. Um, you know, I got suspended from my Facebook account um, in 2020 and that dried up a lot of our revenue because that's where we were focusing on a great deal. So, you know, I had to prove that, you know, that was me in that platform and using that profile. And during that time, you know, so much was happening in the world. And um, for three years, I didn't have any social media presence. So for any other business, they would have maybe closed, um, you know, their doors because they had no way of generating leads or creating any uh, sort of awareness for what they were doing. But I started using video and doing this show, which then brought people to me. And um, in the process, I also then started thinking, wait a minute, I should actually double up with LinkedIn, of which I jumped onto LinkedIn sort of last year. So, so many people would maybe start a business and not realize that all of this could be taken away from them if they don't actually, um, you know, start owning their own um, properties. Now, if somebody wants to sort of um, get started and work with you and maybe learn some of the things and the lessons that you've learned, what would be the best way, Patrick, to get a hold of you? I have everything available on my website, digitalsharecropper.com. If you want to work on me one-on-one, -on -one, you can. Otherwise, you can just peruse some of our blog posts. I try to touch on the different things related to digital marketing with building a brand, building a business and a site, marketing, the, those type of things that the basics that are sort of applicable to most businesses out there. Oh, fantastic. Now, I will make sure that I put those links in the show notes below so that people can actually click through and get started on their journey. Now, you mentioned that you offer one on one coaching services. What are some of the sort of insights or strategies that you often find yourself imparting to your clients that, you know, are seemingly easy, but a lot of people find difficult to comprehend? I've noticed three main things that pop up, but I think at the top of that list is definitely the what I call the bootstrappers mindset. And it's obviously most people will be familiar with bootstrapping is sort of making it work rather than just looking for a solution, just sort of figuring it out, jumping in there without any capital. And what I found is that in an online business, capital can all almost always be your enemy because you're then looking for some place to put it, some new tool instead of learning the basics and the fundamentals of business. So I think whether or not you have any funds to work with, it's really important that you understand the whole bootstrapping mindset. It's really a way of prioritizing what do I need now instead of what might I need in the future? What is something too good to pass up or has some sort of introductory deal? It's really a lot of people, they're trying to build this huge portfolio of these tools to help them. And instead, they just need to learn a few basic skills. And as they learn those and repeat those, they'll see the spots that come up where I need a tool to help me do this more efficiently, or there's something where I physically cannot do, or it just takes too much time and I need a solution for that. So maintain the bootstrappers mindset. That's a huge step towards success. I like that. You see, first of all, it's like that butterfly in a cocoon sort of uh, analogy where the tools will come in and then you know, just open up the cocoon without having the butterfly actually flap its wings for it to actually have strong wings because some tools may be relevant for now, but as you grow within that platform, it becomes much more expensive and you're now a slave to that platform instead of actually utilizing it for the actual use case that it, it needs. And I know of some people, you know, we usually conduct what's called a total online presence audit, and we notice that they have tools that are just sitting in their hard drive already gathering digital dust because they don't know how to actually use them. They got sold on buying the tool, but they don't actually have a use case for it. Now, let's just really look at this bootstrapping, um, you know, and, and you also use structure because it seems like a very foundational um, you know, set up and, and, and um, you know, to your approach. Can you maybe share a specific instance where these principles have actually made a significant impact to your business outcomes? Sure. So with structure, what I've noticed is when you're doing work, you can do it inefficiently or efficiently. And I, that should sound basic to everybody. But if you look at how you spend your day, so much of it is probably 
more or less paper shuffling, remembering to do something, realizing you forgot to do something and then adding it. Maybe you're making lists, maybe you're adding it to a tool and then writing it back down on paper to remember it. There's so much inefficiency in our day that if we can add some structure and that goes just, it goes beyond our how we structure our day, but how we structure our business, how we structure our content, how you structure your life. I think it plays a huge role in that you can have, so what I've been focusing on the digital sharecropper recently is on content and the structure of content and how you can create this formula that will give consistent sort of outcome to your content. So it'll be, you can repeat it, it'll be easy to implement and you're not gonna get to the end and say, did I remember to put an image in there? Did I remember to put a link to something or other? Did I remember all these little things? You have structure and you have a tool that's going to help walk you through that process so that you have sort of a consistent output that's going to be at the same level of quality. And so I think adding that structure in your business everywhere is really going to move you forward. Oh, absolutely. Because when you're working by yourself, you've got so much time. And if you don't put you know, things scheduled or some sort of way of doing things. You just sit in front of a computer screen and not produce anything. And you wonder where all the time has gone and you haven't got any sort of results to show for it. So from what I'm hearing, it just seems like you've got all these very uncommon sort of processes or strategies that you're utilizing within your um, you know, business to actually get the result that you have gotten. Now, how do these tactics set you apart um, you know, in the online business world and how can they be relevant to the people that are watching this episode right now? Well, I think what a lot of I've seen out there online, it's there's this real push that there's this new latest and greatest thing that's gonna move you forward. So at the present moment, it's AI, that you're just going to be able to put in these AI prompts and you're gonna get content, you're gonna get social media posts, you're gonna get all this wonderful benefits from using this tool. And I've been around long enough where before there was AI, there was this craze for outsourcing and we're just gonna hire virtual assistants and they're gonna make our life easier. And years later, hardly anybody's life was made easier with these tools. And what you find is that they didn't understand the fundamentals of, if I'm going to outsource this to a, another person as a virtual assistant or to a tool like AI, I need to understand what the outcome should look like. So if I'm hiring someone for content, I need to know what good content looks like. If I trust uh, a virtual assistant who tells me they write good content, if I trust AI to just, oh, this is it, it's probably pretty good, I don't know if I'm putting out anything good. So it's understanding before I hand this off to somebody else, I need to know what it should look like. And I kind of, I don't have to be an expert at it, but I have to be good enough to recognize when it's good. Oh, I like that because so many people will just hear an ad saying, yep, yeah, get a VA and they're on the next line to get a VA. And now you just mentioned AI, you know, get AI and everybody's just making a mess of it um, and not fully utilizing, you know, the tools to their full capacity and which, Obviously, like you said, we are all renting this digital space. And when the landlord comes to collect, he's not going to want worry whether you've gotten the crop or not. And it's up to you to actually deliver on the crop. Now, I really appreciate the time that we've spent on the call today. But, um, you know, you, you, you've done the work, you've created the platforms and you've done the traveling of which you've amassed all these lessons and things of that nature. But there's certain things that... If you would have come across this video in your younger days, you know, you would have picked up a few nuggets that would have gotten you onto the next thing. Now, looking back, if you would maybe give yourself a piece of advice, um, you know, to your younger self, what would it be and why? One sort of recurring thing that comes up is it was in physical real estate, in the digital real estate, you're almost buying the dream instead of buying the work. And so what I mean is, when you're buying some system that's going to make you wealthy, most people are buying it, seeing the wealth on the other side and not seeing what you have to do to get that wealth. And I think if you do some self-exploration, you really get to know yourself. The wealth on the other side may or may not come. You need to enjoy the process and the work you're doing. So in real estate, especially, people would see some sort of product and they'd want to get the $20,000 paycheck, $50,000 paycheck, but they were not willing to do the steps to get there because they, they didn't even see them. They only saw the money on the other side. So I think a lot of when getting into business, you really want to understand what is going to be required of you and see whether or not you're willing to do that and do some self-exploration. Just really get to know yourself. Oh, I like that a lot, you know, because 
everything in the ads is usually deceiving. They're just telling you the six minute abs. They're just telling you the, you know, the, the, the last final beat, but nobody tells you that it takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Um, you know, they just show you the 21 year celebration of you being of age. So I think people need to take a lot of due diligence in order for them to actually be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Patrick, I can't thank you enough for the time that we spent on the call today and, you know, just bringing this whole new different perspective um, into the way we should approach the online space, especially with being a digital sharecropper. Thank you. It's been fun. Absolutely. And there you have it, folks. That was Patrick Dawson. Um, and he's not only shared his insights, but he's also left us with a wealth of knowledge and inspiration to fuel our own online endeavors. We are renting these properties and if we're not utilizing them to our own advantage, when they come to collect, be sure to have something uh, to show for it. So you need to go from bootstrapping and structure your own growth. I think uh, Patrick's journey actually reflects the resilience and adaptability that is required for us to thrive in this digital age. But your journey doesn't end here with the end of this video, uh, dear viewer. If you found value in today's episode, I'm sure you have, because this is a whole different way of looking uh, in the online space. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us for more insights and more inspiration like this um, and stories from experts like Patrick Dawson on the online prosperity show. And I just want you to remember that uh, your success in the digital realm depends on who you are and how you approach, um, you know, your day to day with structure and also acknowledging that we are here to live, to learn and to contribute. All right. Now, Patrick, thank you so much once again, um, you know, for being on the show today. Until next time, guys, keep dreaming, keep hustling and keep prospering. Bye for now.